Hi guys, today we will discuss VIX index. Now in this course, we won't be like following the VIX index, but what I am trying to tell you is a learning phase, which will help you really to like sword off problems. Because basically when you are trading, there are many things involved. The strategy that we discussed in this course will help you make good short selling decisions. But you need to look for other variables that confirm your trading insight. Because at the end of the day, you need to be sure that you are on the right track. Now the plan can help you make money, but you have to know what really is happening in the market. Now to know what is happening in the market, the best thing is VIX index. One of the top most like things that work in the market because there are many things in the market that don't work, which doesn't help you. But VIX is not one of them. VIX is something that really helps. Now, if you look at it, if you're trading stocks, then you can see there are different VIX index. CBOE, S&P 500. Uh, this is an inverse VIX, which we will discuss in the next chapter. Um, you have got dynamic VIX short term futures, weekly futures, uh, mid term futures, if you just zoom down, medium term linked to SP 500, linked to SP short term linked to SP 500, beta pro 500 futures, and so on and so forth. Even you can see that there is a company named Wincoms SC which have VIX in Hanoi, Vietnam, I guess. So you can see VIX is like really popular. There are many, many VIX index available. Now if we turn to CBOE VIX index, which will come within a minute, then I can explain you what really happens. Now I will uh, like tell you that if you're trading in S&P, do like keep an eye on VIX index. You have to know what really is happening in the market. Now you might say, okay, I'm trading in Dow Jones. Why should I look at S&P 500? Now, basically, our trading plan doesn't factor in VIX. So, you have no problem at all, number one. Number two, even though you have no problem, but still, you should have an eye on it. Because if things go down, then you have to be vigilant. You have to be on the guard. Because sometimes, as we have discussed and like later on the, in the course, in the examples, sometimes the strategy changes so quickly that you have to be on the guard. Because sometimes, uh, even in the normal stances, the strategy happens to give you like a day notice. Max, one day notice. Today's trading day has ended today. So from... 4 p.m. till let's say today night 11 p.m. then you will sleep and the next morning market will start. So what do you have? Five, six hours? So you have to be like on your toes. You have to follow the plan and look for other signs that confirms your plan. And one of the signs is CBOE volatility index. Now, how does VIX index works? Number one, VIX index works whenever it reaches the highest point. It means people are fearful that a fall will come in. Whenever it reaches like the lower part of the VIX index, let's say here, people believe market is like not that much problematic. Basically, how does VIX calculate itself? Let's turn to monthly. Basically, VIX turns itself from buy and sell orders in options. Now, if I am fearful, then to cover my risk, I'll be buying options so that if the fall comes in, I can save money. Now, what do I mean by that? Let me explain. Institutional investors, hedge fund managers, or in all the big fish, the people whom we call big fish, the people who invest a million shares. Now, if I need to sell those million shares, then I can't. Because in a day, 
it's not enough for me to sell those million shares. There are too many variables involved that may not like help me out. The market can crash uh, the stock that I hold. If I go in to sell them quickly, the stock price can crash and that can lead me to huge losses. So I cannot sell within a day notice. The plan that we discussed in this course is based on like short term trading because most of my students are retail investors. But if I need to sell, I can't. So what do I do? Now, if let's presume I bought it here, market have reached here, right? What do I do? How do I get out? I sell puts. I sell option strategies. The reason? Because it helps me out. I can sell offload them at a later date, but I can sell those options at the highest price, near the highest price. So that is one strategy. And this like index follows that. Now, if you look at it, what is the date here? The below mentioned will be date. This is September 2008. So in September, everyone was fearful. Just look at it. Till 2014, it fell off, fell off, fell off. People were extremely afraid here. Let's go back to 1998, August. People were fearful. See, this is the fall. So you can see it tells you when the people are fearful. Now, I'm not saying to completely follow it. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying to look an eye on it. When the people are more fearful, when are they like available to buy? Because if you look at it here, it's at the extreme low. So people are willing to buy it right now. Let's move to some other VIX. Um, S&P 500 VIX. Let's go there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me turn today or let's go to monthly. Now if you look at it, people became most fearful in October 2008. Just look at it. The VIX is at the highest point. This is a monthly chart. So it's not something like for the long, short term. This is the longest term possible. If you look at it in October, it reached the highest point. In November, it reached even higher. The spike, look at the spike. And now it has reached to the pre-2007 level, 2006 December level, which makes it that everyone believes that the market will rise up from today onward. 2018 is good. Why? Because VIX is down. If you look at it, let's move to S&P. Wait, let me open a new one. S&P 500. Let me show you something. Wait, let it be. Now this is a CFD, but it usually follows the index. Or we can find the index. Wait a minute, please. Okay, let's follow this. Wait a minute. Let me make it big. Let me make it monthly. Boom. 2007. Now, we discussed 2008, wait a minute, S&P Futures, VIX. Just give me a minute. Boom, boom. Right. Now, the thing to note, right here, people were most fearful. Now, let me give you an insight from the institutional investor point of view. I won't care when the people are most like fearful. I know that's the point of fall. 
if you look at it this is october 2008 and if i go to the chart this is october 2000 now if you look at it here it did fall for the next four months right this month um that is november it spiked even further so i don't believe it as a sign of complete sell now i'm talking about the monthly level i'm not talking about the daily level right now so always look for the monthly level first it will tell you what is happening on the monthly level it doesn't mean that it's like dangerous it means for an institutional investor that okay now the like fall could stop because if everyone is bullish then this means things are not that bad just look at it here 2011 september let's look at it here 2011 september extreme fall people were fearful right here on this fall they were fearful right here so on the monthly level you can pick signs of reversal now if we look at it here in 2006 in november when everyone was like some kind of a bullish 2006 wait 2006 what october november 2006 right here it was not that like it was not something that to be on bullish on if you look at it once everyone saw that okay people are not that fearful they only made this rally and then they started to put flex like, stocks onto the people if you look at it on the fall the first like hit on this red mark on this red line in 2005 february on the fall 2005 february this was where people would have bought the institutional investor not in the second mark because till that time they have made the price rise they have made the index rise from 12 11 till sorry 1181 till 1400 that's a 30% rise index usually rise 30 50% max they don't rise 300% so you can look at it that they have made the huge money and that's why i always tell my students look for the monthly first to analyze when a reversal can happen because if everyone is fearful then an institutional investor won't be that fearful he will be fearful first than the others if i just turn the vix index from monthly to daily and then we just move out to 2008 why don't let they let us go in go to monthly daily okay they don't let us do that but no problem let's change the vix to this is 2011 right yeah 2011 september let's go to daily and 2011 september is on target now Here we go. Now, just to show you one more thing. Let's zoom out. Zoom out. Zoom in. Zoom. Get it in the middle. 2011 right here. This is the top, right? If I zoom out and make it this and i zoom out you can see the 2011 in the first fall from here 2010 may till here 2011 january no february starting 2011 february starting just look at it here right on this rise people were becoming less fearful see from the top they were fearful 
right here it is 2010 May let me bring in middle so that you can clearly see it yep right here people are fearful in May 2010 if I go here May 2010 May 2010 right here people were extremely fearful on the fall right here so they started to sell but as an institutional investor I won't be that afraid I would look at it as a buying opportunity and that's what ex like exactly happened from August 2010 till April 2011 it rose from August 2010 July August right here just look at it from August 2010 people were less fearful they were buying 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 now this is the first fall this is first fall is December 20th let's look at it here December right here people became not that fearful they were like happy to buy because once fix it at the low people are happy to buy once it's at the high people want to sell and get out right so here people were okay okay they will buy it they were not that concerned for the next four months the market rose if you look at it December 20th January 14th one month February 10th two month March April 14th four months now in these four months the retail investor was buying they were not that afraid it was at the lowest point if I just zoom out for you this was the lowest point in those era because the mark like the rise and fall in the future was not there if I just make it that way yeah right here people could not see in the future right so right here it was at the extreme low this was the extreme low 2010 April and that's what exactly it here is 2011 April it's at the same rate the VIX index so no one is fearful but if you look at the S&P it was reaching the tops this is May and this second is October 2007 and if you look at it from here it's April and just look at it in the future now you can see the months on the lower part May June July so once the people were like happy to buy the market has already reached the top and it started if you look at it and then it started to rise up in August 2011 in June July August in August if I just zoom in to show you further down yeah here in August the first fall had come in and now the second rise was coming in and in that time you can see VIX was rising VIX was rising at the extreme points now this high is Oct July August let me show further see in September it rose even higher in September October it rose even higher and if you look at it when everyone was like thinking okay they will buy there was not much money to be made in the last like rally till October VIX started to rise so you can see that the fearfulness at the extreme last moment rises up but you cannot expect it to rise up two months in advance or one month in advance or even 10 days in advance it rises up at the extreme time and if you look at it once it crossed this major high right here this was august 4 
and if I look at it here, this was August. So on the fall, the VIX started to rise on the first fall, and then the price rose up. And at this extreme point in October, let's see what happened. Here we go. This is the October part. See October. This is October 14th. This is October 20th. So you can see that VIX has come down a bit, but the fearfulness is, if I just zoom out, near the extreme point. This is the extreme point previously. And VIX is about at the same time, about at the same level. And then VIX starts to drop. See? That's what I am telling you. On the monthly scale, it tells the retail investor a wrong thing. Because it tells the uh, like big investor, big fish, that it's time to buy. If everyone is fearful, because basically the major investor is contrarian investor. He will be buying when everyone is fearful, as Warren Buffett says. But if you look at it, on the daily mark, it told you that it was dangerous right here. But once they were saying to buy, it was not that good. That's what I was trying to tell you. That if you want to learn VIX, this is the lecture. I told you, once it fell off to the extreme lows, then the price started to rise on the first low. But did it like it rose on the lows? But once it reached the top, VIX started to rise. But don't like fall into the trap where right? once it has reached the top right here, you will be selling the stock. No. Once you see it is touching the extreme high moments, then you have to be vigilant. Because you know, now the extreme fall comes in. And that's what I'm trying to tell you right here. Once the VIX reached the highest point in October, the fall started down. Extreme falls. Just look at it. This is 1549 and this is 735. That's a 100% fall. From 735, this is 100%. 1549. From 1549, this is a 50% fall. That's my point. So VIX told you what was about to happen. Now, once you will learn further down, you will see sometimes you will jump in early. Our plan will give us a like signal to sell early somewhere around here, somewhere around here, somewhere around here. Not here. This is the first eye. So usually it doesn't give the signal here. This is the second eye. So it will be giving signals on the second or third highs. But as you will see further, it's usually not a like loss making trade. It's usually a small profit trade. This is also a fall. But from here, the fall is usually sharp. So you can look at the VIX to understand when the sharp falls will come in so that you can time your trade accordingly. And that's the really important part. So VIX can help you understand the future. And if you will look at all the index, usually they follow each other. They may not follow at the fall like if S&P had fallen 50% in this era, as we discussed just now, so NASDAQ might have fallen 30%, Dow might have fallen 10%, but the fall will be there in, on all those like index. Even if there is no fall, then it won't be rising 10%, it will be like flat. So it's really helpful for you to learn the VIX index because it can change the money making things for you. You can earn more. Thank you.